Hey, it's Paul with RackOutfitters.com. We're gonna go over a full assembly and installation of a Thule Evo Clamp Wing Bar Evo base roof rack system. This is a bare roof vehicle, happens to be a Volkswagen Passat. And we'll go over all the steps that are involved from receipt of a delivery of one of our boxes. Uh, this is a 200 pound weight cardboard box, very, very tough. We wanna to make sure that when you receive your delivery, it's in good shape. And so let's go ahead and begin. So I'll uh, just slice open the top of the box with a box cutter or scissors. Now what we do is these boxes, we custom uh, cut the boxes to match the exact length of the bar. That way there's no movement inside the box, no extra space there that could allow the, the components on the inside to move around. Let me go ahead and lift it up on our bench here. Okay, so then all I gotta do is just slide out the bar and here at the end of the bar we have the other two components so what makes up a base roof rack system is the evo clamp foot pack the fit kit and the load bars and so also inside the box these are all stretch strapped together so that they don't flop around inside the box just take that same scissors and slice those away Okay, so once again, we've got these boxes. Now, something that Thule does that is beneficial for installation is each box is numbered. So we have one, two, and three. So that helps, helps you in reference to the other instructions that are included with these components. So let's go ahead and start with the fitting kit. So the fitting kit are the vehicle specific components. And you'll notice on this box, of course, you got the fit kit number. And then also the vehicle, in many cases, it'll have the vehicle. Sometimes um, it may not have your vehicle and it might not reference your exact year model, but um, the key is the part number there. So let me go ahead and open this up. So now inside of this box, you'll have your rubber bases. These are the bases that'll rest directly on the roof and then your metal door frame brackets. And then the very important instructions. Okay. Now the instructions, once again, specify your exact vehicle. And it's of course important that you're putting it on the vehicle, the correct year model. If, you're, if your particular vehicle falls at a generational change, make extra um, extra, take extra steps to make sure that you definitely have the correct vehicle. Now here, you'll also see how it's itemized where you have the clip numbers. And so in this case, all four of these door frame brackets are the same and the number is on the inside there and all four are the same. However, the base pads are different. And so you want to identify those different base pads. So here we have the, the number that is embedded into the the rubber itself and so you'll want to identify that you have have those base pads and and you realize that they're different um, these instructions are overall safety instructions of course important to read um, and lots is thick but there's lots of different languages so if you just take the time to read a, read the uh, your language make sure you uh, understand some of the things that maybe uh, you may be unaware of with, um, with roof rack usage. So let's go ahead and open up the foot pack. So this is the number two. So here we have our warranty card. We've got a unique tool that's included. And then we have the actual feet themselves. Now this too comes with a set of instructions. Now these instructions are for a general overview of the installation of the roof rack system. However, there's nothing vehicle specific. Okay, then lastly, we have the load bars. So I'll just go ahead and Okay, so now in this box with the load bars, you have 
In this case, silver. So we have two silver load bars. We have two sets of rubber strips. We've got four of your measurement inserts, four end caps, and some more rubber strips. Let's set aside this box. Okay, so uh, we have everything unboxed, and now we can begin the installation of the roof rack. So for starters, let's go ahead and install the rubber strips that go into the bars. You'll notice it's one rubber strip, but they're actually designed to be split down the middle. So let's do that. Uh, let's take a moment to explain how these bars work. Here you can see it's extruded aluminum. You have a box beam construction and you do have a directional position of the bar. So the thicker end of the bar is the forward position and the thinner is the rear trailing edge. So we'll go ahead and aim that in the direction that it'll be sitting on the roof. Now I'll go ahead and put the first strip with the triangular impressions there on the front portion. That is a wind diffuser and we're just pressing that in to the bar. Now what typically you'll find is as you get towards the end here that you'll have a little bit of excess and you can cut that excess off again with just your standard household scissors. Okay, so now it should be perfectly flush. There you go. All right, let's do that again, just in case you missed it. We got two rubber strips. Once they're separated, the strip that has the texture, let's aim that in the correct direction here. Go ahead and press that into place. Get the other one started. Okay. Now the concept behind this split rubber strip is that that gives you easy access to slide in the fasteners that you'll find on certain carriers that allow attachment into the track. Now there's lots of other accessories that may just grip around the bar, which is fine, but if you have an accessory that utilizes the track, then you don't have to cut the rubber in order to install that. Just the threading just slides right through the center portion there. Okay, so now we have essentially the bars prepared with the rubber. Let's go ahead and flip those upside down. And next we'll insert the measuring devices. So those just go in. We'll go ahead and bring them all the way into the end so that doesn't restrict where we'll attach the foot pack. Okay, so those are all ready. Now the foot pack. What we want to do first is from the fit kit, we have these adhesive diagrams that tell you exactly where these components will fit onto each individual foot. So let's go ahead and just assign a sticker for each. And from this point on, this foot will be assigned to that position on the vehicle. And it'll also make installation of your fitting kit extremely accurate and really straightforward. So, and that's what we'll do right now. So the next step here, doesn't matter which one you take necessarily, just go ahead and grab one. And you notice it says FR for front right. Over here, let's just match that up. So we have on the illustration, FR for front right. And now what we'll do is go ahead and take the 555 rubber base. So here's the 555 rubber base. And I'll go ahead and press it to the underside on this pivoting plastic base. So these press in all around the perimeter. Okay, so we have that in place. We go ahead and at this time take off that, that cover. Next, we can also put on the door frame bracket. So 242, all these are the same, so it's pretty straightforward. And with this design, it's just a matter of inserting it 
right up underneath this metal bracket and then press until you feel it click and it's definitely engaged there. Okay, so we can move on to the next one. Take off your cover, see what the sticker is, RL. So over here, let's look for RL. There it is, RL. 556, let's find 556, here it is. Again, press the rubber into place. And I know all the door frame brackets are the same, so I'm just gonna snap that in. See, now you can see how we can just move along pretty quickly. FL, let's find FL. There's FL, 554. Here's 554. You'll notice these, these rubber pieces have a very unique shape. That's something Thule's well known for is their engineering of their interface to the given vehicle. Very precise and very protective to the vehicle. All right, and lastly, now process of elimination, it would be those, however, still look RR, RR, that would uh, uncover if you made a, an oversight earlier on, if you have the wrong base pad at this point, but we don't, we're all good to go. So we have RR, 557, 557. And let's just press that on and press in the door frame bracket. Okay, so we have all of our feet ready to be installed. Now at this point, we wanna go ahead and decide which is your front and rear bar. We always wanna start with the front bar. Now, this is where these sliding measuring devices come into scale and in, into play, and they're called, it's called the scale. So here on the back side of the instruction sheet, we have the front and the rear here identified as X and Y. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Evo scale, and it says 44.5. Four so let's go ahead and find that number, 44.5. So I'm gonna slide this right to there. So whether or not you can see it, there's I can see the 44, and then halfway down the edge of that the end of that uh, opening is where your mark is. Okay, so now this is gonna be my, essentially the driver's side. So we wanna put the correct corresponding foot on that. Let me go ahead and do the opposite one real quick here to 44.5, it'll be the same. Okay, so now we have our, that's a right rear, front right. Okay, so front right. Now to in, in order to install this, we have this area up here, which we need to release by pressing in these two little silver tabs. Should be able to do it with just one hand if you want, and then just slide slide it in until it touches. Be sure not to move that, because you've you've made the effort to get that position right, so don't, don't let that move. Now we can find the opposite side. That'll be the front left, so same thing here. Okay, we got that in place. Now we have, let's look at this end here. We have this little excess area of uncovered slot. So let's go ahead and fill that in. That's what this rubber is for here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that in. We don't wanna cover up that last portion where the enlarged tri uh, rectangle area is. So I'll go ahead and cut it. It'll be exactly the same on the opposite side. So I'm gonna put these back to back. And now we have two sides ready to go. Let's push that in. Okay, and now we have end caps. These are also left and right. So we got our, let's get the right one here. <laughs> there we go, okay. And just with a bump of the heel of your foot, uh, palm of your hand, you can kind of press that into place. Okay, so let's get the other end. We got the rubber and let's get the right end cap on there, correct end cap. Okay, so now since this bar is complete, let's go ahead and get it on the vehicle and we'll come back and do the rear bar in just a moment. So to know where that's gonna go, let's take this this instruction sheet with us and we're gonna open up the doors on the vehicle. Oh, let me make sure this is unlocked for us.
Get all four doors opened. Okay. Now, here you can see we have the position, the Z and the, and the W. So we're doing Z for the front position. Also, you'll notice here these side diagrams to give you a, a good understanding of the positioning of where ultimately the door frame bracket and the base pad will, will be positioned. Okay, so our Z position is 275 millimeters. So let's take a look at that. So what I'll do is I'll extend this across to the opposite side of the vehicle and draw it towards me and then bring it down onto the roof. Now with the measuring tape that's provided, of course, this has both, uh, both measuring types, both SAE and metric. We'll use metric. And once again, it is 275. So what I like to do, the measurement begins at where the paint stops and the glass starts. So 275 is right there. I'm going to just kind of hold that at that position and then bring the Bring the pad to it. Okay, so there we are there. And then get the other side, do the exact same thing. Okay, so here, once again, exactly the same position, 275. Okay, now at this stage, we'll start. getting everything in position as it as it was shown in that illustration so you can have have all the clips engaged properly in this case i have to loosen these up slightly okay now since i did move the other side a bit i want to move i want to double check to make sure this didn't move on me and we're still good all right so now we'll just go ahead and begin tightening and I don't want to go 100%, but I got it firm. There's the slack is removed. And let's get this side. We'll do the same thing. Remove the slack. And really, we're about ready to go to full tension. It's a little bit of back and forth because you want to make sure they're tensioned evenly on both sides. This particular tool with its large handle is designed to ensure that it's tightened sufficiently. So as we're getting to the maximum tightness, as it gets tighter and to full tightness, you'll hear and feel it click. There it is right there. So that way you know it's fully tightened and I can even close the door. Let's get that other side. And there it is, okay. So there we have the front bar installed. All we have to do is put the covers on, which we'll do last. Now let's get back to the bench and we'll take care of the rear bar. So uh, let me grab the instruction sheet. And now we go back to this. So for the front bar, we were at X, now we're at Y. We wanna come over here to the Evo scale and we're at 40.5. So let's go ahead and slide this out to 40.5. I'm angling it so I get reflection and I can see those numbers. They're pretty small, but if you angle it into the light just right, 40.5, there it is. And same on this end, 40.5. The light hits it just right. You can see it really clearly. Okay. Now, once again, we want to make sure we get the correct foot on the correct side. So we have right rear. This will be our right rear. I'm going to squeeze in those tabs on the inside there. Gently put it against the end of that measurement device there. Same thing on this side. Okay. And then let's go ahead and get our rubber in place here. Okay. I got that. Get this end cap, get it right. 
Okay. Got it. Let's hit this end. So the rubber is critical to minimize or eliminate the wind noise with any open open areas that you have a track exposed that will definitely create wind noise and these can be these are considered world class in terms of low wind noise all right so now this bar see it's much even getting much faster okay so let's uh look at our measurement again so 700 millimeters and i'll just estimate 700 millimeters to get us in position and let me get the measuring tape now that that 700 millimeters is a distance center to center however this is where we stray slightly from their their recommendations of measuring i go to front to front which of course is the same thing but much more accurate than trying to determine where the center of the bar is okay let me get the other side 700 millimeters Got it at the front to front, and we're at getting pretty close. So in this case, from the box, this was a little bit too tight, so I'm just going to give it some slack because I want that rubber base to sit exactly as it showed in that illustration of the fit guide. And I can move it more easily. Okay, there's our, our 700, and I got that rubber base right where it's supposed to be. And again, triple check yourself in case it's moved at all. Okay, here you can see that rubber base is right in line where, where the groove is on the roof. Again, it's a little bit tight from the factory, so we loosened up a touch. Okay, now we can begin our tensioning. Just pull out the slack. Let's do a little bit on this side. Pulling out the slack. It's starting to get in the right position. At this stage, I can even close the door. And probably get it to its final tension on this side. Okay, so here we can see it's moving away. So this is a good case scenario where if it starts to pull away too far, get it back where it belongs. Also with this particular design, you can also rotate the entire foot so that it angles properly. So we're back in, in where it needs to be. Okay. A little bit of art to it, but pretty straightforward to know where it needs to ultimately be. There we go. We got our click. And we got our click. Okay. So lastly, we have our caps for the finishing touch. Okay, so let's take a look right here. These covers are the final step. You have the stock plug that's included. If you look inside, you'd have to look pretty closely here. You can see where there's a structure inside where there's a ramp. And on this plug, there's a tab where it's sort of almost like a spring-loaded tab. So what you want to do is align that tab with that ramp and just press. And there we go. We'll get all four here. Press that in. Now, if I had a coin, a coin would be ideal for engaging those locks. Um, let me step off screen and grab a something similar to a coin i just have a key okay so let's step back over and here we have 
two tabs, just insert those tabs and press down, and then engage engage that. So now, just so you know, this, this is um, how it comes out of the box. You have the option to purchase actual keyed metal lock cylinders to take the place of that plug. So they're not included because it is part of a system where you purchase matched sets. And so, for example, most people are buying a roof rack to carry something. And so the carriers, whether that's bicycle carriers or kayak carriers, cargo boxes, any number of different things, uh, could also be locked on the same key matched system. So it's a key alike system and that's, that's why they're not included. So you're not buying a mismatched set of keys. So this roof rack would require a set of four but you may have a couple bicycle carriers that also require a set of four. So you buy a set of eight and then all of your complete system would work with one set of keys. Okay, so final step is a safety check just to make sure you can see these are mounted very sturdy. And you've got a good overview from start to finish of the installation of a Thule Evo clamp wing bar Evo base roof rack system. Okay, so on our website for this vehicle and many other vehicles, you can simply just type in the vehicle model of your, of your car and a lot of times that product will show up immediately. Of course, we have fit guides on our site. It's at the top of the screen and you, you'd simply click on fit guides and determine exactly which of the components would work on your particular vehicle. Okay, so I'm Paul with RackOutfitters.com. Uh, this system from Thule is available on our website along with the full line of Thule products. Thanks for watching.